Okay, so we're going to go through installing your new Your Home 6550 laser engraver with Laser Gerbil. At this point, um, we're going to assume that your machine is all put together, wired up, ready to go, and ready to be powered on. And I'm going to walk you through installing it on your Windows computer. So the first thing we're going to want to do is um, put in your USB drive and um, you're probably going to have a couple different things on there. Um, one will be your labor, labor, laser, gerbil software. The other one is probably the manual and another one might be your CH34X um, drivers. So I'm going to show you a little bit different way, um, which I think is a little bit easier to get everything installed up and running and you literally could be done in pretty much less than 5-10 minutes tops. So the first thing let's do is go ahead and install Laser GRB, or GRBL. So if you do not have it, you can just simply go to Laser Gerbil website and you can click download and you can just download it right here. It's uh, lasergrbl.com and that's where you can download the latest version. So in this example, I'm gonna go by with just what we have that came with the machine. So let's go ahead and install Laser uh, GRBL and we're going to, when this comes up, just click yes. And then I like to create a desktop shortcut and click next again and install. And then now we're gonna say, yeah, sure, let's launch it. So the first time it comes up, it's going to see that there's a new version of the software and yours may even be older than this. It really depends on when you purchased your machine. So normally I would say, yes, download it, let's get the software, but I'm gonna just show you one other thing real quick. Um, so let's click cancel. Let's just say that message did not come up. We're gonna go up here and click the question mark and we're gonna to go to auto update and we're gonna to go to check now. And then it's gonna come up, says it found a new version. I would recommend doing this probably every week or every two weeks, just, just to see if there's something new, new features out there. And so I'm gonna click download. Download it, it's gonna say, do you wanna let it update? Say yes, go through the same process, click install, and then we're gonna launch it again. So now that we have it here, there is a couple things we need to do. So first thing we need to do is install the drivers. So go up to tools, and choose install the CH340 driver. It's gonna come up, it's gonna know that I have a 64-bit machine, it's gonna click install, or you're gonna click install, and hopefully it will say success, click OK, and then just close it. So what we need to know now is where is that installed on our machine, what COM port? So there's, uh, there's an easy way to do it. So if you have Windows 10, go down here to the Windows button, Click that and then just start typing device. Now you can type the whole thing device space manager or you can just click device and you'll see Windows automatically pulls these up for you and we want the first one device manager. So we'll click that, it comes up. We're gonna go right over here down to ports, click the arrow and as you're gonna see, we're gonna look for USB serial CH340 COM port and mine is COM7. So that's what we need to know. Yours is gonna be probably a different one. It might be the same one. You just need to know which one that is. So mine is COM7. And then you can go ahead and close that. If you don't have Windows 10, let's say you have Windows 7, click the Start button and then um, type Control Panel, um, Control Space Panel. But if you just type Control, as you can see, the first thing that comes up is Control Panel. And this is just an easier way to do it. The top right, there's a search. Just type in device. Same thing again, you're gonna see it's gonna pull up these here and the first one is device manager, which is what we want. It's gonna bring us back to the exact same place. We're gonna click the arrow next to COM ports and we're gonna look for our CH340 COM port, which ours is seven or mine is seven. So we can close this and then we can close this. We're gonna come back to our software and we are going to change this to your COM uh, whatever yours is and then we're going to click this little connect button right here So we click that and you probably heard the noise and how we can tell it's connected is you get a message right here It says GRBL 1.1 F Plus another thing to look for is these buttons here. You'll notice now they are they're lit up. They were shaded out before but now they're lit up and if you 
for some reason don't choose the correct COM port, so we're going to click disconnect, and let's say we chose the wrong one, 5, and we click connect, if you notice it's going to hang for a second, and it's not going to connect. Your message goes away, and these are shaded out now. So that's a telltale sign that we did not choose the correct port, and we'll come back here to port 7, or COM 7, and click connect, and we are connected. If for some reason your device is not listed in your, uh, or your COM port is not listed in your control panel, I would recommend um, unplugging your USB cable from your computer, plugging it back in, making sure your cable is plugged into your control board correctly, um, and in some cases you may even need to restart your computer depending on the age of your computer. So now that we've done that, the next step I would recommend, uh, make sure that we're connected and come up to GRBL and go to GRBL configuration. So when you come here, it should say 34 config um, read successfully. And basically that's just telling us that it read our control board and we are connected and that's exactly what we want. And that's pretty much it. You don't really need to do anything else. You don't need to change any of these. So we could just click close. So now before we actually get started with any um, pictures or anything like that, we want to make sure this is set up correctly. We want to make sure that the software is functioning correctly and our machine is functioning correctly. So what you're going to want to do is import some custom buttons. And these custom buttons are going to help you uh, line up your material and make sure that your machine is running correctly. So again, I would recommend coming over to um, Laser GRBL's website and scroll down to usage and go to custom buttons. And here's basically some instructions of different ways that you can use the buttons, what they're for, um, how you can make your own, which is actually pretty cool. You can do a lot of that. But if you scroll down, go to the big download button, and these are the ones that you're going to want. So we're going to click download and we're going to save the file. And it is now downloaded and um, usually they go right into your downloads folder. If you're not sure, you can click on that, click on this, and it's going to go right to my downloads folder. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way and we're going to right click here, custom buttons, and we're going to choose import custom buttons. And then we're going to navigate to my downloads folder and um, I would search for the custom buttons GZ and um, mine is sorted a little differently so mine would well, it's gonna be right there so click on that and then click open and it's gonna ask you do you want to import the move to center say yes so just basically click yes to all of them so now it puts them down here for you and uh, we can walk through a couple of these here. Um, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. But um, one of the main ones is you're turning your laser on and being able to focus your laser and so forth. So the first thing we want to do, so now that we have our custom buttons here, we can go ahead and get a picture in. Okay, so let's go up to File and let's open a file. I'm going to come down here to my pictures and you just navigate to wherever you want your pictures. I'm going to choose this one. And so now that the pictures here, there's a lot of different um, different settings, there's different options, there's different things. It really depends on the picture that you want to import. It depends on how you want to print it. There's so many different variables to print in this. So I would definitely recommend going to Laser Gerbil's website and reading up on the wiki page, um, which I'll show you in a minute, there is a lot of different um, options and features and people do produce some really nice stuff. It just takes a lot of practice. Um, so basically, all these different adjustments you're gonna play, wanna play with, there's some tutorials, there's YouTube videos, there's some videos on the Eurohome Facebook for our group. So I'm gonna just leave this as a default for right now probably going to want to brighten it a little bit for sure so as you can see adjusting all the all the goodies here's some other options here of rotating it and so forth so um, I'm going to click next 
And so basically here is a couple things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that your home recommends for their, for their machine. So you're going to want to change the engraving speed to 5,000. And you're going to want to make sure your S max is 1,000. I think default is to something. I'm not really sure, but you're going to want to make sure that is 1,000. And uh, pretty much that's it for right now, for right here. Uh, make sure M3 laser on and M5, which it should be. And then we click create. Now that we click create, let's give it a second. This is our image. And I don't know if you noticed that um, you notice these buttons here now highlighted. And so now this will allow us to test our machine and make sure that we're connected correctly. And right now we are connected. So I would say at this point, let's go ahead and power on our laser machine. Again, you will, um, you should hear the fans come on on your laser. If you do not, um, there is another board that comes on that they recommend putting on top. I put mine in the back because I didn't read it. And there is a power button in there as well. And if you don't see these or hear the fans all come on, then check the power button for the uh, 15 watt laser extra power supply. But this here is, um, you could just put it anywhere for right now. Um, just as long as it's not up to that far corner, but I would just say put it right here for right now. And looking at your um, your software, the laser gerbil software, down here it says turn laser on for focusing. So click that to turn your laser on. Um, definitely make sure you have your glasses on. And this already tells us that we're working. I see the dot, allows me to focus it, as you can see. Um, now we know we're communicating and your laser is working and when you put a board there you can now focus that so it's a real real small real size of a pinhead and it's also really good for lining up on your project for where you want it to be so let's say I wanted it to be in the bottom left corner of my project right there so there's a lot of options for that so let's just turn that back off for right now so another thing is your frame, your, this is your your picture right here, and I'm not even sure what size that is. It's probably pretty good size, but so right now your machine, wherever it's at right now, is where your software thinks zero zero is. So let's say you move your machine over to here, and this is where you want it. You can click this first arrow, which resets it, resets it to let's just say zero, and you see your plus right here. That is where the software thinks your laser is, which it is. One thing how you can test if we're doing good is, see this arrow up, let's we'll click the arrow up, and as you can see my laser moves a little bit. This, the right hand slide is how far it moves, and left is the speed of it. So let's just move it up, um, doesn't matter, 3,000, 4,000, and we'll click up again. And then we're gonna click to the right, and then down, and then to the left. And if you notice, I'm gonna go ahead and step it up more. If you notice on my laser screen, mine is doing that's to the right, that is down, that's up, and that is left. So, and that's home. That brings us back to where our home position is here. So now that we know that we are functioning correctly, and this is important, if for some reason you click up and your machine does not go up, then there has to be a wiring issue and I would recommend stopping right here, turning the power off and um, double checking all your connections and everything. So just real quick, I wanna show you, let's just go by this first one right here. This one here will move your laser to the center of your picture. So I'm gonna click that. As you can see, mine put to the center, which it thinks is the center, it moved my laser over. And another thing you can do is turn your laser on and that should be dead center of my piece of wood, which seems like it is. Another thing you can do is here, okay, let's just go to the second button. It moves it to the left corner of your material. The next one over does a frame with the laser power on really low. So let's watch what it does when I click it. As you can see, it is running all the way around the board on a low power. It's running the frame. 
I'm going to zoom you in a little bit here so you can see this. And that tells me that's pretty perfect. I'm right on it. So one other thing I just want to show you, if you want to customize these buttons, like for example, this one that we just did, it, it just goes too slow for me. So I'm going to right click on that. We're going to go edit. And the F is 1000 and that is our speed. If you remember down here, this is the speed here. We had it at 4000, it's going fast, but I'm just going to put it at 2000. Just because I want it to run a little bit faster and then click save. And now I'm going to run it again. And as you can see, it's running twice as fast now as it was, but not twice as fast. Well, yeah, probably. So that's just a little bit better for me, kind of because I'm impatient. But if you were doing a round project on a circular frame, this is the same thing right here. Um, it would run a circular frame around the project. And obviously it is on a slow speed as well. So we're going to just stop that. We're going to abort it. And um, that's pretty much it. This, this one just turns your laser on and off, as you can see on my board. Not really a big thing. And then that's it. When you're ready to burn, um, right here you would click Run Program, and this will start the laser to burning. One thing that I want to point out is down here is your speed adjustments. If you click this down here, your power, your speed, and then your rapid, I would leave your rapid all the way up, will come up and here you can adjust your speed. And if you go on the Gerbil website, it'll explain a lot of these to you. Um, you, know, you want a little bit faster. Each one I think is like 10% up, 10% down. So that's pretty much how you adjust your speed, uh, your power, your speed, and then your rapid. Um, what the rapid is, is if, if I'm going to burn, let's say from here, the bottom of this foot, to here, it's not going to burn anything. It's going to wrap it real fast between here. Instead of just going a real slow speed between all the blank areas, it's going to go real fast. So that's pretty much it, um, other than push and play and going from there. And if you say, you know, I don't really like these lines, there's too many lines. What you can do is go up to file and reload last file. And that will pull the picture right back up. And I want to change these to 7,000 lines. Sorry. And then, sorry, 7.00. And then you can click next. And then same thing with your speeds and everything. Click create. Give it a second. And then it will update. And then basically whenever you're ready you there you can see now it's going to actually be a lot more detail probably that's probably a lot of lines and it's probably too dark but that's how you get started that's how you get everything going um, one thing i want to recommend show you um let me pull this back over here is when you go to the laser grbo website again here's your download um, here's your um, support and then here's your frequently asked questions um, support, if you click on that, come down here, um, click on the github.com link. This will bring you right to um, the laser gerbil information and um, come up here to the wiki. The wiki will give you basic information on how to use the different things, custom buttons, everything. Um, and then from there, I would say Google any information or anything like that. and. I think that's pretty much it. Um, good luck, and I'm looking forward to everybody seeing some, some good stuff. That's it. Have a great day, and uh, enjoy the machine. Jungle.